Um, ja sem Rud, um, to je lepo, da ste došli prijatelji Sprski. Srpski. Uh, <laughs> Zal mi je, da nego rovim v saštem jezicu. <laughs> I will tell you something about preliminary projects uh, we did at our university. And first of all, um, I must introduce also my students because it's a kind of a habitus that I always um, come to conferences with my students because I think it's important that we empower our students. So I would like to introduce to you um, uh, Claudia Kosma, she will be here in a second, Lukas Frankenberger and Stefan Wikidal. I'm teaching at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. I'm an artist, scientist and design researcher. And may I shortly introduce our university to you. This is our university. On the left side you see the old building and uh, on the right side you see the new plans of um, our reconstruction of our university because we are we miss space we need more space as all universities I suppose at our university Josef Hoffmann was teaching Colum Montmosa Gustav Klimt you will sure know um, Alfred Roller Heinrich Tessenov Oskar Kokuschka Franz Zizek and we have a lot of different disciplines from art, design, restoration. Uh, we have creative writing. We have a new master program for social design, arts for urban innovation. And let me now introduce to you how I got involved in, with mathematics. 2007 and 2010, um, I was listening to a lecture from a colleague of mine. He is working together with Rudolf Taschner, you might know. He is very famous for his um, hands-on interpretations of mathematics for people who are not coming from the mathematical world. He has a mass space at the museum's quarter in Vienna. And um, in, within this time, we worked together with uh, Professor James Cohn, Professor Reinhard Winkler, and Professor Rudolf Taschner at uh, mass space. So it was an interdisciplinary work with um, one, uh, one different university, University of Technology in Vienna. University of Applied Arts in Vienna and Mass Space. The students from Mathematic Department could choose their topic and they decided for infinity. And uh, we asked them to have books so they would write like in a diary their process of work. Actually, we had to kick them out at seven o'clock at night from our um, places or spaces because they were discussing too much and we needed to get, the get home. <laughs> so they were really involved. And now we'll present you some of the results. One of um, the results was that they designed um, a Super Numario world to explain the numbers. So it's a prototype, but my colleagues at the University of Technology said that they would love to have a diploma on, on a game made by this. The second project is about Otto Kantor, also Infinity. And this project will be presented by the students. But math needs music too. In order to use the acoustic of this chapel, let's try to sing the Otto Cantor quantity.
After this uh, performance, we asked um, the University of Music if they know if there are any compositions inspired by Otto Kantor, and they did some research and found out they are not. And they started to work with the students on compositions on Otto Kantor. So you see how you can manipulate other disciplines through mathematics. Uh, the next uh, project was about a movement which we had in Austria for a short time. It was um, the movement of uh, the so-called Krocher. It was a movement of how the young people would dress and dance. And they even used a special language and they even had a special, special clothes they would wear. So the students were interested how this virus of uh, fashion could um, manipulate uh, students and they would um, develop, um, they worked with a virus program and um, tried to sample the different parts of the fashion. So on the left side you see this virus program and then the adding of the fashion styles, of the dancing styles and then uh, you could find out how long it needs that um, hundred people get involved with Krocher movement. So what happens with a trend? The students even dressed up the same. We also evaluated the program. Uh, during this project, we were invited uh, from uh, Professor Bachmann Kalantari to Rutgers University to a conference on polynomiography, uh, a book I really can recommend to you. You also find it in the internet. It's called Polynomiography, and uh, it's an IT program which works with algorithm and tries to um, make people get or get people involved with mathematics who are not so involved with mathematics. So it's working very visual. And we went to the conference there and we thought about how um, uh, design education um, can help to understand mathematical problems. And we found out there are some similarities. So uh, the algorithm try uh, to find paths and also in design we try to find a lot of solutions. Uh, the students worked on how this IT program influences their creativity and we presented that. So there are similarities between Baroque gardens, the students started to create textile objects, they produced postcards with questions like, do my thoughts have points of convergence? So as you see, our art students are very much influenced by the philosophical uh, touch of um, mathematical backgrounds. One of the students uh, worked more with film and cinematography, so she did a, a solution like um, this, and another student developed on a personal formula, this should be me actually. So he found, he designed a person. Then 2010 we were invited to the bridge conference in uh, uh, Pech and I asked my students from the University of Technology and the University of Applied Arts, uh, what would you like to present? How was your work together, your interdisciplinary approach? And we went to Pech and we said Math Goes Design posted. The other students you can see here. So what, the student, what we started to do is that the students started to write down questions during the lectures, which came into their mind and um, started to write them on post-its. And we did some performances downtown, so we wanted to get people involved with mathematics um, in the city. So we went, for example, to the metro and also to the St. Stephen's Place, and here you see our staff who is cleaning the roads, and they were getting also involved with our post-its and discussions. We left everywhere. 
and post-it became a, a special um, a word for the landscape architecture. For, for example, you might have heard about guerrilla gardening and post-its became a word for you take a, a space which doesn't belong to you and we use this post-it as a word from landscape architecture for education. So we believe that there are different forms of education which are needed and yeah, this was our guerrilla fight for it. And we, as you can see, we left these questions on all the places during the conference, but it's very easy because it, you can move it. And, um, people attending the bridge conference started to answer these questions. And at the end, we presented our discussion about mathematics and arts. Uh, 2011, uh, we were invited to the conference in Belgium. Uh, we switched the topic to Math Goes Fashion, and we presented this also in Coimbra in Portugal at the Bridges Conference. Uh, you might know Dirk Hoylebroek. He is also part of the Tempus project, as we are, and he gave a conference at Ghent University. Then the students who study art, design, and textile education at our university started to work on clothes and mathematics. So they used geometric forms to develop fashion, and they were wondering if mathematics can influence their style uh, approach. So they worked with polyhedras. This student worked with, um, uh, she called it body um, index clothes, so she believed that every person has an own body, of course, and you could make a dress which fits to every person um, in a special form. So she used the formula of the parable f um, and fit in some special sizes of uh, persons. I also have some dress like that and she developed this special dress, just made of parables. We made a workshop also in um, secondary schools to try it out. Then we went to the Biennale of Venice and we were working on, with children um, on different forms of um, inflatable, uh, yeah, inflatable forms. and clothes. And this, you can see this happened in one of our labs, how the students get to find their ideas, they start to try out, they don't just talk, they really start to try out and then um, new things happen. We try to present at every um, conference differently, we always do usually performances, today we do a little performance, but we had so many projects that it was difficult to bring all of the students and to do a performance of all the projects. Um, this uh, was, for example, um, also a part of a dress of uh, the so-called platonic fashion. Um, this is the Möbius um, interpretation and fashion interpretation of Claudia Cosma. Uh, she developed this um, infinitive Möbius form uh, to uh, part of a dress and a performance. And even one student was influenced to, de to design a Möbius hat for a wedding. We also presented at the so-called Petra Kucha night, you can find it in the internet, um, one of our performances on fashion, math goes fashion. We also evaluate our programs, so we ask the students how they felt about the project, what they learned, and what was interesting to them, or boring even. Then we had the study visit in Vienna, so 
uh, during the project in uh, concerning temples. We had a kind of um, more female interested in the topic, uh, but anyhow, we had uh, students from Serbia. Uh, one was from Croatia, and one of our students is from Hungary, and the rest are from Austria. What I think is interesting um, concerning the topic that you can see that the study focus, it was from architecture and urban design, graphic design, art and design education, social design, arts as ur urban innovation, as part of from the artistic interested students, and from the scientific way uh, uh, focus, there were st students from telecommunications, financial mathematics, computer science, and psychology. And uh, we used the method of applied design thinking workshop uh, which was um, created by uh, the D School, University of Stanford. Uh, we adapted this program and um, you can find the open source and free material at this um, homepage. It works with empathizing. You need to find out in 19 minutes a short course. You can also do it in one week or one month. Uh, what we want to uh, teach uh, students that um, how a design process works. So you have like um, in a very short time you can go through a design process. You can learn to know how designers work. Um, even though if you are mathematicians or teachers or it doesn't matter from which uh, subject you're coming from. The most important thing we believe is empathizing. So the students started to find out what the other one is interested. They needed to define what is the topic, and some of you might um, participate at the workshop this um, afternoon, so you can have um, this afternoon a, a different workshop, but I was using the same methods. And then they ideate their ideas and solutions, and they prototype. And what is very important, they have to test if it works. Also, if you educate, if we teach at the university or wherever, we need to test if it works. And actually, as you can see, the students had a lot of fun. And I will introduce you the groups. So, uh, Irina, Andrea, and Alexandra. We're coming from psychology, art and design education, architecture and interior design. Christine, Madlena, and Natasha are from pedagogics, art history, art education, graphic design, and financial mathematics. Um, Dushan and Stefan, um, they're from computer science and electronic engineering, painting and graphic design. And um, Giovanna, Milovan and Elizabeth are from applied mathematics, financial mathematics, theater, film, art history and visual arts, art history and social design. This is the background of the students. And at least Marie Therese Marina Melina uh, from art and design education, mathematics of finance, information and um, calculation technology, computation technology. And now I shortly will present you the results uh, which came up within a month to give you an idea how it can work. The aim of the interdisciplinary workshop at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna was to develop educational tools for enhancing playful math education through methods of arts and design. The applied methods of applied design thinking in interdisciplinary teams from Serbia, Croatia, Hungary and Austria and developed simply easily produced manufacturers prototypes and we had some input lectures uh, about math visualization and design thinking. Okay, group I, one. Results from approaches were to raise understanding of geometrical shapes and their impact on our daily lives through play with proportions. By exploring different city floor plans and investigating proportions and geometry, one group came up with a task that would give students a chance and freedom to play with and explore geometrical shapes of cities which have their own sizes and proportions. Group two. The second group worked on visualization of finance risk tasking. Because they considered that the topic should be experimented by problem solving through a risk box that would allow you to decide the transparency of process and show the risk percentage. As a following up, there will be a project with Parsons University, New York, 
by Carol Overby and Aaron Fry, um, which have a, or run a visual, visualizing finance lab in Vienna already this autumn. So you had to put your hand inside, you had to solve a puzzle, and you could decide by yourself what kind of risk you take, how much transparency you take. The third group uh, created a tool that would improve the understanding of geometrical shapes that are by developing a construction and um, about augmented reality drawing key, an art key. And I will ask Stefan to say a few words about the project. Uh, so we uh, were working on a construction in order to draw three-dimensional objects uh, in a two-dimensional way. Therefore, we built like a tent-like construction out of a picture frame. And underneath the picture frame, we put uh, geometrical objects uh, coming from daily surroundings. Uh, and in the end, we put an augmented reality system on the objects. And when you uh, took, for example, your iPhone uh, on, the applied, uh, on the augmented reality system, uh, they opened up some moving objects. I hope some of you are informed about augmented reality. Uh, it is kind of a very new technology uh, that uh, places a, 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 um, a, a virtual object uh, connecting a virtual uh, reality with real reality. Thank you. The fourth group um, worked on patterns in nature and possible correlations of patterns in numbers. Mathematical concepts such as Pascal's triangle, Fibonacci numbers, and golden ratio were considered in an artistic mathematical discourse with the help of an interactive model for exploring ratios, visual relation, and human faces. The mathematical concepts of phi shall be addressed. So you see they used very simple forms of um, finding solutions and getting people involved with mathematics. The group five, um, the fifth group had their objectives in connecting arts, mathematics, and telecommunications, which I think is very contemporary for our youth. Explaining how a mobile phone works was considered as an interesting topic. From physical disassembling models and looking for the antennas until designing individual mobile cases with fractal patterns, they developed hands-on tools. Also, the students performed at their presentations. And one of the solutions was, for example, that you could design uh, handy cases with fractal patterns of your handy, the real fractal antennas of your handy. The sixth group worked on a new musical notation dictionary, which should offer new graphical visualization for music where children have the opportunity to combine geometry with their own visual and acoustic experience. And I must say, if you might think there are many different projects, all were developed by the students. We did not tell them on what topic they had to work. It came into their mind. And um, uh, this group um, had the transfer of um, the music notes and the geometric patterns. And um, are there some Hungarians inside here? No Hungarians. But we will need now your help. <laughs> okay. It's okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so if you want to go on reading on the projects um, we're doing, or I am doing with the students, you can um, read it in the um, Applied Design Thinking Lab. 
in this book, which came out right now, the last week. And um, I want to thank you for your attention. And um, hvala lepa. Any questions? Too much information complains. So I leave my email. <laughs> you can um, write me an email if you some questions appear later on or if you need some further information. Um, are there some things which you think you could use which inspired you? Or do you think it's totally abstract? Weird? Too artistic? No? Ne? <laughs> it's too abstract? Match thinking, too abstract. What we found out, for example, by um, um, actually, especially at art universities, not always, but um, some of our students had very bad experiences with mathematics in schools, and they got involved through the projects at university, which I also think it's very important that our uh, people who beca become students in uh, mathematical education and art education work together at university level already. And um, they uh, found a new approach to mathematics, actually. I mean, they changed their way of thinking. They got interested, and and, and I believe it's a good um, method to get people involved. So, if there's no more question, thank you. <laughs>